Here's the classic map of Tornado Alley uh, for the central United States. We're seeing with climate change that we're actually getting more tornadoes now forming down here in Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia. But traditionally, this has been Tornado Alley. Warm, moist air feeds up from the south. Cool, dry air comes down from the northwest, and they collide and that forces the air to rise. You get a lot of thunderstorms that build here. Now, if we didn't have this warm, dry air coming off of the plateau, the higher terrain in New Mexico and down in Arizona, we'd probably get a lot of thunderstorms that develop earlier in the day. But what happens is this warm air here rises up and at about uh, 10 to 15,000 feet up in the sky, it forms a layer of warmer air that we call a cap. If you think about it, if you have a bottle of soda, you take the cap off, put your thumb on the top of that and shake it up, your thumb is the cap. When you release the cap, the whole thing blows up into a really big mess. Well, when the cap here breaks, when it gets enough heat all building at the surface and you finally break through the cap, then these thunderstorms just explode and develop very rapidly. And that's where we see the storms that can get all the way up into the jet stream and form really severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. So we get about 45 to 50 tornadoes a year here in Colorado. Texas tends to get about 150, but we're right on the western edge of Tornado Alley. Watches and warnings. Watch means watch out, something may happen. Warning means something is happening. So if we issue a severe thunderstorm watch, that means there could be severe thunderstorms. Same thing with the tornado watch. Goes on for a period of about five to seven hours. A warning means there is a severe thunderstorm or there is either an actual tornado or we're seeing the rotation that could be a tornado. When you look at clouds that are building, the big cumulus clouds, Look at the shape of them. If they're kind of fuzzy looking, that means the updraft isn't all that strong. But if they're very crisp like cauliflower, that means that that air is exploding high up into the storm at a very violent or rapid rate. And it's that crisp cloud that means a very strong updraft that can produce severe thunderstorms. Uh, this is a rotating supercell thunderstorm. The whole storm is spinning because it's gone way up into the jet stream. And storm chasers call these striations. They're like a stack of plates. Uh, sometimes we call it a mother ship. They're very dramatic and they're often seen on the eastern plains of Colorado. Uh, be careful. The lightning, of course, can go way out far from where the base of that storm is. And this is what we call a barber pole effect. That whole storm is spinning just like a barber pole would be. The inflow going in and the updraft taking it up. You can see how that would translate eventually into a tornado that fought, could come down to the ground. If you storm chase, a couple of things. Number one, don't do it unless you know what you're doing. The National Weather Service actually has classes on people uh, that people can take and learn how to do this. Don't just, just grab your phone uh, and go out there not knowing how to do this because it can be very, very dangerous. But the best way to approach a severe thunderstorm is from a more southern angle that keeps you out of the heaviest precipitation on the north side of the storm and it also makes sure you have a good road system so you can get in and out and away from the storm. But I really urge you, don't do this unless you have taken classes, you know what you're doing. So how do these things form in the first place? Thunderstorms develop because we get an updraft that be like hot air, hot air balloon rises. So that rises up, the air begins to expand, it cools, it condenses the moisture. Once the moisture condenses, then that starts to drop back down as rain, so you get cool air coming back down. Updraft is warmer air, downdraft is cooler air. If you get an explosive thunderstorm, it gets up high enough to the jet stream. That jet stream going up here creates wind shear, and that's what starts to make that entire thunderstorm begin to spin. And that is when you get a severe thunderstorm. Now you get the cool air coming down and that's condensing and forms a lowering that rotates called the wall cloud. And from that descends the funnel cloud. A funnel cloud is a tornado that has not reached the ground. So if you hear us say there's been a funnel cloud sighted, that means we have not seen it get down to the ground. But then if you get where you have debris and spinning on the ground, you'd have a tornado. One thing in Colorado to be careful of, our low level humidity is so low that sometimes that condensation funnel evaporates. So you don't see it coming all the way down to the ground, but you will see dust swirling around. So even if you can't see the condensation funnel all the way down to the ground, you could still have a tornado on the ground. Watch for that. This is the Simla tornado, June of 2015. 
out pretty much open country. A lot of times I like to call that natural crop rotation. It's spinning around out there. A very picturesque tornado. Fortunately, didn't do much damage because it was in pretty open country. But seriously, tornadoes can be damaging and dangerous, not just on the far eastern plains, but also closer to I-25. This is the Windsor tornado, May of 2008. Unusual because it started early in the day, 1130 in the morning near Platteville. Unusual because it moved from the southeast to the northwest and unusual because it caused so much damage and one fatality, $125 million in damage and a fatality. So we can get big damaging tornadoes this close to I-25. We don't have to be farther out on the plains. So I may sometimes talk and say uh, radar has indicated a tornado. Well, what that means is we're using the Doppler radar. Uh, Doppler radar not only can see the precipitation, but it can also see if it's moving quickly toward the radar or away from it. A good analogy to explain Doppler is Think about how a race car sounds. It goes as it goes by. As the race car is approaching you, the sound waves are kind of bunching up because it's coming toward you. As it goes by, the sound waves are spreading out and the pitch drops. So we can tell with microwave energy radar signals whether raindrops and hailstones are quickly moving toward the radar or away from it. In this case, right here, that's what we call a couplet where the green is moving toward the radar, the red is moving away. That would be what we call a radar indicated tornado. Another thing we can see with radar is this kind of fish hook right here. We talk about a hook echo, the tornado would be right in there. That was actually the radar from the Windsor tornado. So uh, storm based warnings are very important. Uh, we have big counties in Colorado, Weld County, Larimer County, Adams, Arapaho. They're great big counties. If we issue a tornado warning for all of Weld County, that's many, many square miles that are being warned for a storm that covers a much smaller area. So this is what we do. Instead of for a whole county, we issue it just for the little polygon that we think the storm is going to stay in. So in the case of the Windsor tornado, it's just this little polygon and our Storm Shield app and some other apps are available will give you that warning. So those, that's an important thing to remember. Get the storm based or the polygon warnings. We have different kinds of tornadoes in Colorado, not just the classic big ones like the Windsor tornado, a supercell tornado, but we have smaller ones that are called land spout tornadoes. And that's a weak tornado that uh, doesn't last for long and generally doesn't cause much damage. Uh, these are examples of land spout tornadoes. They tend to be uh, pretty small, but they can still tear some things up a little bit. And we also have something called a gust nato, which think about when a boat is going along in the water and it makes a big turn and swirls out an eddy of water around it. If we have a big thunderstorm that's kind of blowing out a big gust of wind, it scoops up some dust. Some of that gets caught back into the updraft of a new thunderstorm and you'll get a spinning column of air, but it's not really like a classic tornado. We probably would not warn for it. We just say that uh, we've seen some gust nados or a few uh, short-lived land spouts. And here's why they happen. Uh, very often, because we don't have that much humidity compared to other parts of the country, which makes our weather really nice in the summertime, but very often we will get uh, bands of thunderstorms that kind of pop up and they go through a life cycle of their updraft, their condensation, their precipitation, their downdraft, and they'll kind of die away. Well, when they do that, the downdraft hits the ground and fans out in all directions. And so you get two areas of thunderstorms that then produce what we call a boundary or a gust front. That's a gust of air coming out from these thunderstorms. And they can oftentimes collide and form a new area of thunderstorms. So you can actually see this boundary on radar. It may not be precipitation. It might actually be bugs. And the bugs can actually cause the uh, let me get rid of that real quick. Uh, there we go. The bugs you, can bounce back on the radar and you'll see them. And when they collide, you'll get new thunderstorms that develop. Got so excited about the bugs. So when that rotation, when that air kind of comes together, it's drawn up into the updraft. And very often a uh, land spout tornado will actually be bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. It's a non-supercell tornado, still can be fairly strong, maybe uh, an EF0 or 1, which can cause some damage. Let's talk about that scale. We rate tornadoes with the EF or the Enhanced Fujita scale. An EF0 or 1 is a weak tornado, cause a little bit of damage, knock down some branches, maybe some shingles off the roof. 
When you get up to a two, that's getting to be a pretty strong tornado. Winds of 111 to 135 miles per hour, and that will cause roof damage, blow out windows, and really wreck up trees. An EF3, which is what the Windsor tornado is, will take roofs off houses, do a lot of damage on buildings, blow all the windows out of cars, flip them over. Those are winds of 136 to 165 miles per hour. And an EF4 is a violent tornado with winds up to 200 miles per hour. The EF5, that's the finger of God from uh, Twister and that was incredible damage. Fortunately, only a few tornadoes a year, if that many, anywhere in the country become EF5s. Rotating supercells, that's that mother ship we showed you, the stack of dinner plates, the barber pole, that's what they look like. Sometimes we call them a mother ship. It looks like something from perhaps uh, the movie Independence Day. And they come in different flavors. An LP supercell is a low precipitation supercell. Produces some large hail, not necessarily out of heavy rain. Very picturesque. I mean, that thing is amazing looking. And we get a lot of these in Colorado because our surface humidity is relatively low. They're not as common in more humid parts of the country. An HP supercell is a high precipitation supercell. Very dangerous because in this area here, that's large hail, heavy rain, and maybe a tornado. So you don't like to chase these because you can't always see. This would be like in the bear's cage, as they talked about in the movie Twister. Very dangerous storms.